What's up everybody? Tony here with iTech Check, and today we're going to be taking a look at another dash camera, but this one's pretty unique. It is a rear view mirror mounted dash cam, so it pretty much just fits over your rear view mirror that you have in your car instead of, you know, having like a little dash cam that's off to the side. Most of the dash cams that I've ever reviewed, uh, some of them have tiny screens that, you know, to review the video. Some of them don't have any screens. Uh, some of them utilize your phone to watch, you know, the video. And some of them have uh, front and rear view cameras. This one is very unique. Like I said, it covers, it just goes over your rear view mirror that's already on your car and it turns it into a 10 inch LCD display. So you can watch uh, what's behind your car. This also comes with a rear view camera, which is nice. So you have front and rear view. So all the footage that you take, you can watch directly on this huge screen instead of having to pull your phone out or trying to watch it on like a two inch screen who can see that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited for this. I want to share it with you guys. So let's go ahead and see what you get inside the box. So this particular dash cam is made by Van Top. And like I said, I purchased this on amazon.com. I will be putting a link in the description in case you guys want to check it out yourself. And if you guys like me and you want to support my channel, please use that link because it helps me uh, fund products to buy, to do reviews for you guys. So here we have the dash cam. Take that out, look at the accessories real quick. So here is a cigarette lighter plug and it looks like it has a mini USB. And it looks like here we have the kind of rubber bandy things to help keep this secured onto your rear view mirror. Here's like a little tool you can use to maybe put the wire in your car or hide the wire rather. Get a little sticky adhesive with some screws. This is probably for the rear view camera. You get a little cloth to clean the screen off with. Here you get some more, another sticky tab with some, some more screws. And here we have the power for the rear view camera as well as the camera itself. Now, the other nice thing about this, the rear view camera will turn on when you put the car in reverse automatic. And then when you put it back into drive, it automatically returns to the front view camera, which is very convenient. And then here's your manual. That's pretty much everything inside the box. Okay guys, so here it is. It's a nice big rear view mirror. Has a protective cover on here. It feels pretty substantial. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, it does not feel cheap and it actually feels like there's some, uh, some metal parts to this. Here's the front camera and you can move it around. You can also extend it out if you need to to kind of get it around any obstructions you might have in the middle of your car. And then these, the rubber pieces here, where you just attach those little rubber bands to kind of keep this attached to your, your main rear view mirror. And then this is kind of like a rubber pad that's got some grip on it to kind of keep it in place. Here you have the micro SD card slot. This is for your rear view camera and then the uh, mini USB that powers it and then you got your power button So now I'm gonna go ahead and set this up in my car and we'll go over some of the features and uh, show you how the Camera actually works and how good the resolution is Okay guys, so here I just wanted to show you the setup of the dash cam and kind of go over some of the features that it has in its settings and stuff like that, just to kind of show you, uh, to give you a little guide on how to um, install it and what it basically can do. So here we have the Van Top dash cam. Uh, as you can see on the back, it has these little rubber grips. So when it comes in contact with your mirror, it helps keep the dash cam in place. 
Now, if you have a rear view camera like I do that has a recessed mirror with this plastic uh, shroud around it, these little rubber grips might not even touch the mirror and it will kind of slip around a little bit. So what I suggest is to get a thin piece of uh, maybe rubber or some foam that you can put across here and then put this on here and it'll help keep it in place a lot better than it would as if it was just uh, on your mirror. Now that's not for everybody, that's just for people who might have this uh, this little edge around their mirror that kind of protrudes out off of the um, rear view mirror. So first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and take your cigarette lighter adapter, you're going to go ahead and plug that in and then you, you want to route your cabling throughout your you know, the top of your, your car, what I would recommend first is probably putting the dash cam on, plugging this in, and then reversing it out uh, down to your um, cigarette lighter. And that way, if there's any excess, you can kind of, you know, stick it underneath the dash or whatever you want. So installation, super simple. Um, you're gonna have these, you're gonna take your little rubber um, attachers here. So we're gonna take our dash cam. You're gonna pull this part of the camera out as far as it'll go, and that's to kind of help reach past your rear view mirror. We'll go ahead and put this up here, and you'll take one of your rubber attachers, just kind of attach it to the top part, and then we'll bring it around, and then just put it on there and release. And just hold that on there for a second. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. So we'll take our little rubber fastener here, clip it to the top, and then we'll bring it around the bottom and then up to the top, and there you go. So now the dash cam is in place. So now that your dash cam's in place, you kinda wanna take your uh, power adapter. You're gonna plug it into the top here. You can bring it down a little bit so you can see. Plug that in. And then kind of adjust the mirror to your normal viewing. Uh, that's all plugged in. Then what you're going to want to do is to install your rear uh, dash cam on the back of your car, pretty much anywhere you would like it. Then route this just like you did the power cabling, probably on the opposite side of where you did the power cabling. You might not have enough room for both cables, but if you do, you can route them towards the same. But I routed mine. I'm going to route mine on the opposite side. So we plug that in. We'll put that around the back for now. Okay. So now that's all installed. Now we'll go ahead and go over the functions of the camera. So now when you have the rear camera plugged in as well as the front, you're going to get this as your default picture if you don't have the streaming mode on, and we'll go ahead and go over that in a few minutes. But this is the default view. I have my camera upside down, that's why that it's upside down in the back there. So if you wanna change views, you just swipe to the left, and this is the front view. Swipe again, it shows the rear view only. Swipe again, and it shows you a dual view. So that is pretty nice. Also, when you're on the front view here, you can go ahead and kind of adjust um, how what the camera shows because there's more uh, the camera can see than what can be viewed on the actual dash cam. And you just hold your finger here and then swipe up and down and you can kind of adjust what you see on your camera. And that's only for the front, the front view, not for the back. You can also change the brightness if you do it on the right side here and you move tap and up up and down you can adjust the brightness i always keep mine at full brightness because it's easier to see so if you want to get into your videos that are that are already saved on here you swipe to the right okay and then you can see all of your videos okay. that are saved on the dash cam Super nice, you don't have to use your phone, you don't have to look at a small screen. You have half the screen here to see what you know happened or what was recorded um, from the dash cam. And as you can see, 
it picks up a pretty wide range of the front of the car and that is super super convenient because I almost got into an accident the other day and if I wouldn't have had this dash cam and the guy would hit me it would have been my word against his and because I had this and I could see off to the left you could clearly see that the car was coming into my lane and almost hit me but that's besides the point so here are all your videos that were recorded you just select which one you want and it'll automatically start playing over on the right here and you can switch this from uh, the front view, the rear view, uh, any collision or any um, event that might have happened. You can select that here as well. And then if you want to select them all, you hit that and you can put them in the trash as well. Super easy, super convenient. I really like it. So let's go ahead and go over some of the settings. If you want to get to your settings, you swipe down. Okay, so here we have all the settings. So as far as the resolution goes, you can do uh, 2K for the front, 1080p for the back, or you can switch them up. You can do 2K in the rear and 1080 in the front, or you can switch it around. So that's super convenient as well. Now, as far as the loop recording, this is the increments that the dash cam will record. So if you record, if you hit one minute, it'll record up to one minute three minutes or five minutes, uh, vice versa. I always have it set to one minute because if it's five minutes and you're looking for something specific, you have to just, you know scrub through like five minutes of each video just to try to find one specific thing. So I usually keep it on one minute. Time-lapse, basically what that does is it, it if you have it set for one second, it'll take uh, one second clips of your video um, if you hit two seconds, it'll take one frame per two seconds. And if you hit three seconds, it'll take one frame for every three seconds of video. So it kind of condenses your whole day uh, into, you know, a shorter video, which the only thing is it requires an extra kit to make it work. Uh, that is only on for the duration of your car being on. If you turn your car off and turn it back on, it's off by default. So you don't have to worry about that staying on. It's it's on for only when you want it and that's it. Audio, you can turn the audio on or off, which is your microphone. I always like to keep that on, uh, you know, just in case you have to say something or whatever. Um, driving mode. So this is uh, how sensitive the camera is to record an event. Um, I had it on high sensitivity and it seemed to be taking or recording a lot of videos and I didn't really want that. So I think I found a happy medium, which happens to be in the middle. So um, low sensitivity, it takes more of a jarring movement to record a video. A middle is kind of in the middle and the high is like every little bump kind of sets it off. So I have that set to the middle. You can also have it set to off as well. Parking mode. This is one of the, the best features of this camera and it sets it apart from all the other cameras because uh, every other camera that I've ever had, you had to hardwire your camera into the car for it to be able to be powered all the time. This one has a built-in battery. So if your car's off and the camera's off, it will wake up if it detects a collision or if, uh, something hits your, your car it will turn on, record its video, and then shut back off again. You don't have to have it hardwired, so it's got power all the time. Like I said, it has a battery built in. Super convenient. I set that to high because the only time your car is going to really uh, start the recording is if something hits it and you want that to be the most sensitive. So I go ahead and put that on high. Uh, license is if you want to put in your license plate number in here, it'll record it on the video when it records. Sleep mode, this is in case you want the uh, video to turn off while you're driving. So I'm going to want to use my rear view mirror and you won't want a, a picture displayed all the time. Uh, but that's just me. You might, if you have the camera, if you don't have a backup camera on your car and you want this in the back, you can use this as a rear view camera through the backup camera. And in that case, you probably wouldn't want it to turn off. So you can also set that to off. So it's, it always shows what it sees out the back camera. 
but you can also set it to turn off after one minute and three minutes and then it'll just kind of like turn into a regular rear view mirror and it won't show any video until you tap on the screen and i have that set to one minute to turn off and code uh, h265 is definitely um, a faster format but you can also set it to h264 i just keep mine on five frequency you can change between 60 hertz and 50 hertz I always keep it to 50. Um, USB mode, if you want to hook this into say a computer without taking your micro SD card, you can also do that as well. But if you want to take the micro SD card out and put it in your computer, you can do that too. So you have two options. You can either plug it in to your computer or take out the micro SD card. Now what I kind of recommend um, that's super easy is get a little extension for the USB mini. USB mini. So you can just unhook this uh, plug in another cord and plug that into your computer to easily uh, transfer videos back and forth to your computer without having to take out the top plug. That's just a little tip from me. The tap sounds you can turn on and off. So either way, it gets kind of annoying, so I just kind of turn it off. Speaker, you can turn that on and off as well. Um, or you can, you know, raise and lower the volume. I just keep it on high. Uh, sounds on and off. You turn those off and on. Uh, streaming media. So what this basically does is if you have it turned on, when you turn your car on, it will show the backup camera all the time. And that kind of goes along with uh, you wanting to use this as a rear view camera instead of using the rear view mirror. Um, you can have that you know turn on automatically when you turn the car off if you turn it off the display that it shows when you turn the car on uh, is a dual display it's the front and rear cameras and that's only have if you have the rear camera turned on uh, if you don't or plugged in i'm sorry if you don't have the rear camera plugged in then it just shows the front video all the time uh, english i'm sorry language you can change uh, between those uh, you can change the date and time. You can format the SD card. You can factory reset the camera. And then here it just kind of tells you the version. So one thing I will tell you, you're going to want to have a class 10 or better uh, micro SD card because it needs to record quickly. You want to get a good micro SD card, not a cheap one, because these are these could potentially be some videos that could be, you know, very helpful in an accident situation. So, so that's pretty much it for all the settings. I'm going to go ahead now and show you some video clips of uh, how good the video is taken from the front and rear cameras. And I'm also going to show you how the backup camera works. So here I'll just show you a little sample of how the parking mode works. So just tap the camera here to kind of simulate something hitting your car. As you can see, it's recording the video. So it wakes up just to record the event and then it goes back to sleep. Okay, so here it's showing it detected um, a collision while you were gone. It wants you to look at it now or you can just look at it later. So now this is the default view that you're going to see when you have the streaming media on and you turn your car on. And then when you have the streaming media off, this is what you see when you start up your car. It shows a dual camera view. Okay, so here are some of the other settings you can do directly from the camera. So if you tap on it, you, have, you, you can turn off the microphone if you want. Turn that back on. Uh, you can enter camera mode. You can take a picture. If you want to record video, you just tap the little button in the middle. If you want to go into the settings, go into the settings there and it takes you into the settings and go back. If you want to lock the video or take a video that is locked like an event, you go ahead and click on the little lock button there. And it'll take about a 20 second clip. Here it shows you that it's charging your mic's on and the rear camera is all set up too. And it is recording in 2K. You have your parking mode on and the sensor for collisions. So real quick, another reason why this is probably one of the best options for a dash cam is because a lot of the dash cams use some adhesive or maybe like a suction cup. And in my experience, when it gets really hot out, if you live in a place 
uh, where it gets, you know, in close to the hundreds or in, even in the 90s, usually those adhesives fall off and it, and the suction cups definitely fall off. So this doesn't use either one. It just um, clips onto your dash cam with those, these little rubber bandy things. So it's securely held on. So you don't have to worry about it falling off no matter, you know, how hot it gets outside. So this backup camera comes with a red wire. And when you hook up that red wire to your reverse lights, the camera will automatically switch to the rear view camera so you can back up. And I'll also put down guides to help you accurately line up your car. So when you put your car in reverse, it automatically changes to your rear view uh, backup camera and puts down those uh, guidelines. And then once you put the car back in park, it automatically switches back to the view that you previously had. Super cool. So here is the red light that I was telling you about that is connected to the rear view camera. What you're gonna to wanna to do is connect this to your um, reverse lights. So when you put your car in reverse, it automatically switches into that backup camera mode. Now just make sure that you don't connect it to your um, rear tail lights or your parking brake. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it goes into the reverse portion of the harness or your light so the backup camera will function uh, when you put the car in reverse. And then here's a little sample of what the uh, speaker sounds like on here. This is on high um, and it's me recording uh, directly from the driver's seat. You can go back, you want to lock the video or take a video that is locked like an event. You go ahead and click on the little lock button there. And it'll take about a 20 second clip. And as you can see, there is a little red light here. That's to signify that it is recording and pretty much when it's on, it's always recording um, those one, three or five uh, minute intervals. And then when it shows the yellow, uh, that signifies that it's an event. So if you were to tap, tap on the screen here, it would turn to yellow. Uh, and that is an event, like if somebody hits you or something like that and that is locked so it won't be overwritten. Now you can also do like I did. I wired mine throughout the top of the upholstery of my car, down the A post, and then down the bottom here and all underneath my floorboard. As you can see, it comes up right here, comes inside, and then you can use your own uh, cigarette lighter adapter with the USB uh, built in as long as it can supply 5 volts, 2 amps. It needs to do that for the dash cam to get the power that it requires. So you don't have to just use the one that's uh, that came with it. You can also use your own if you've already had a dash cam installed like I did. Uh, I just used the power that um, I already had set up for so here I just want to give you some samples of what the video quality looks like. Here is kind of an uh, evening view from the front. These are the 2K videos. This next one is kind of like in the morning, morning time. And then the next video that we have is going to be in midday, where the day is at its brightest. Now in this particular clip, you can see how bright the camera actually makes the road with normal lights. I just turned my brights on, but as you saw before, they were my regular lights. And in real life, they're really not that bright, so the camera actually does brighten up the picture a lot. And then here's a little sample of some video where there are some lights uh, and how good it really does at night with a little bit more light. Now 
Now this is all video footage coming from the rear camera. As you can see, we're coming down the same stretch of road as the first video. There's no, no lights. Um, and as you can see how dark it is, and then the light that does come on, that's just from my brake lights. So just the brake light lights, lights the camera up enough to where you can see fairly well. And then when the lights go off again, this is what you're going to see without any lights on the street. Now here we have another video clip of uh, we're on the street that does have street lights. And this is pretty much what the, you can expect from that rear camera with those lights. And then here's a little video clip of what it looks like uh, during the day from the rear camera. And this is in 1080p. Now, as far as my likes and dislikes about this camera, it definitely has way more likes than it does um, some minor issues that I will talk about. The camera takes really good video. Uh, it has a total wide angle view, so you can definitely see a lot uh, around the front of your car. It's not just what you actually see on your camera. It's, you know, a nice wider view. And like you saw from that one video that I had with the, the near miss, uh, it definitely has enough to see, um, you know, around anything you might have uh, in the middle of your dash. Like, you know, I have that this big thing that's connected to my rear view camera. It totally sees around that and it, it can see you know, all my, my rear view, except for that little, and it's right there. It starts right there, but for the most part, you can see everything. Uh, super, super nice. Um, I love the rear view camera. For me, my car has a backup camera. So what I'll be doing is I'll be putting this camera on the front of my car, actually, so it can help, you know, park in, in tighter spaces to get you uh, closer to cars and anything. You can mount, you know, the camera anywhere you want it, but if you don't have a backup camera, then it's definitely useful for the back. But it does have other options. Um, and I love the fact that it has, you know, all three views, the front, rear, and a split view. So if you want to see uh, both, you really don't necessarily need to see the front of your car because you can already see that, but it gives you the option there as well. The other thing that I absolutely love is the parking mode. Like I said, it doesn't have to be powered by your car con consistently. It has a built-in battery, so if it detects a collision, it automatically turns on and records the 20 seconds um, of that video. That is, that's invaluable. It's, it's great. Uh, another thing is the ease of you being able to watch the, vid the videos directly on the screen, and they're big enough to you know, allow you to see what happened instead of like a small screen or, you know, something on your phone. It's instant. You can show the police, you know, hey, this is what happened right here on my camera uh, and take it from there. Uh, and as far as the, the few things that I kind of, you know, had little gripes with, when you are not using it uh, with the backup camera and you're just using it as a rear view mirror, uh, it is definitely a little darker than your normal mirror would be, so um, it can be a little harder to see at night. And then also at night, um, you can kind of see like a doubling effect. Like if, if the cars have their headlights on, instead of you seeing two headlights, you'll see a double version of that, uh, which can kind of be annoying at night. But again, if you have the rear backup camera set up, you can just use it as the rear backup camera and you'll see video instead of the rear view, rear, rear view mirror. So it's not a huge deal breaker. It's just something, you know, I kind of wanted to make everybody aware of. But other than that, this is a really great dash cam. I'm going to use this to replace the dash cam that I had purchased prior to this. And I would definitely recommend this if you guys are looking for uh, a dash cam for yourself and uh, it's nice to have that backup camera in case your car doesn't have it either. So that is pretty much it for the van top uh, dash cam. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you guys might have. 
Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to let you guys know when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.